Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Barton Power Sports, Sportsman's Warehouse, and Best Care Home Services. Hey, welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. Uh, fun show, even though uh, two no-shows, but that's okay. That is the way it is in Radio Land, and we'll try to reschedule Gary Lester. And I know we'll talk to Gary before the National Bird Dog Championships when he gets down here. And Mark Rose is uh, down at uh, Lake Okeechobee, and I was really wanting to say, man, we could really cover some ground on Outdoors with Larry Ray. We had uh, Fort Benning, Georgia. We would have had Kentucky. Uh, we we would have had Mark Rose in Florida, uh, John Phillips in Alabama, and just got off the phone uh, with Tyler Chisholm, of uh, Wolfpack Adventures on Lake Michigan ice fishing. And so we're switching gears now to one of my favorite places. Folks, if you don't keep up with what's going on at the uh, Cornell Lab of Ornithology, which it took me about five years to learn how to pronounce that, and I even tested Frank on that. Uh, you've got it now, uh, Frank Barton. I'm, I'm fine with it. Ornithology. Ornithology, ornithology. Uh, Guy Trebo, that's the other part. Can you say that word? Ornithology. Good. Okay. All right. I'm not going to ask Greg because he doesn't have to. But, uh, hey, we're going to talk about this is the year of the bird. Uh, uh, the 28, uh, 2018 is declared the year of the bird by the National Geographic, the National Audubon Society, and, of course, the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, uh, BirdLife International, and more than 100 other organizations and we're going to talk about what is what is the year of the bird, and we're privileged to have with us this morning um, uh, Mayoko Chu. She is the Senior Director of Communications at, at Cornell, and good morning, uh, Mayoko. Ma- Ma- good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being with us on and from snowy New York and up in that area up there, and uh, we're not going to talk cold because uh, we already <laughs> talked ice fishing and everything else. Talk to us a little bit about uh, the year of the bird. Yeah, the idea behind Year of the Bird, I think all you outdoors people can relate to, which is there's millions of us who love and enjoy birds. Mm -hmm. And Year of the Bird is a chance to uh, rally around and raise awareness of birds for people who maybe aren't connected yet, but also to have ourselves, you know, take the steps that we can to help birds out throughout the year. And, you know, we've talked to Pat Leonard, we've talked to the crow man himself up there, and... Uh uh, uh, and and we love, we have a lot of bird watchers in this area. We don't just talk hunting and fishing on outdoors with Larry Ray, but uh, with the year of the bird, you know, it, it, it sounds oriental. I mean, it sounds like something that's uh, different. Have we had this before? No, this is the very first year of the bird I'm aware of. So, yeah, the you know, like the Chinese zodiac might tell you that it's the year of the dog coming up. That's what I thought. But, uh... Okay, I was trying, we, we're going from the bird to the dog. Uh, yeah, so, but, but, but yes, Year of the Bird is a new idea uh, to create a movement because birds really do need our help. Um, you know, one in eight bird species around the world is, you know, threatened um, really? with extinction. And so uh, part of what we want to do is just have people appreciate birds. And again, you know, there are some small steps that we can all take that could make a difference if we all add them up. And you're, how long have you been with uh, the Cornell Lab? I've been here 17 years now. 17 years. Yeah. Your roots are in California, I see. Yes. You've got roots in California. Was this your goal in life to work for the Cornell Lab of Ornithology? Ever since I was little, I loved birds. And so, yeah, it's an ideal place for anybody who loves birds. I hope some of you can all come out here and visit sometime or check out our websites because we have so much information about birds that we want to share with people and you've done some things that i think are pretty cool uh songbird journeys four seasons in the lives of the migratory birds i love this birdscape a pop-up book in stereo sound uh was that your idea that was an idea of the publisher who wanted to do this amazing book you would open up and there would be these 3d pop-ups uh-huh of habitats, but you would also hear the the sound of those habitats. What's cool is that the sound of the landscape transports you right there. I think all of you who spend time outdoors have a sense of that. And you came up with 40 beautiful birds to color. Uh, how in the world did you come up with 40? <laughs> with 
with the help of the bird watching community, because we asked people to vote on, you know, on their favorites. Well, so these you didn't you didn't go through the book and pick out your favorites, your forty favorites. I didn't. It wasn't Miyoko's oh, forty favorites. On. It was America's favorites. Okay, I was hoping <laughs> these were your favorites. And um, all right, so we're going to ask you that. What is your favorite bird of color? Well, my favorite bird is. A faina pepla, which is entirely oh, whoa, whoa, black whoa, whoa, except for the red eye. Say that again now, it's slow motion. The faino pepla, that actually is its common name. The faino pepla. Yeah, oh. it's it's the same as its Latin name. It's one of the few birds that has that. Is that it's in a America? It's to say, but it, yes, it's found in uh, the Sonoran Desert in Arizona. Oh, a beautiful desert. place. So yeah. Southwestern bird. Southwestern bird, okay. And it's my favorite because I spent five or six years studying it in the desert. You did? Mm-hmm. So you worked out of the desert? Yeah. And and people don't think of the desert with birds. Yeah, they don't. But, you know, it's a wonderful place to bird watch because it's so open and a lot of the vegetation is low, so the birds come, you know, closer than if you're out here back east craning your neck up high in the trees. Yeah, you don't have to do that when there's no trees. Yeah. They don't have many trees in the desert and what they do. But uh, let's let's talk a little bit about, uh, you mentioned some uh, some birds are, that are that are in trouble, so to speak. Uh, wh- how does a bird get on the endangered list? How, how do we know? I mean, there's so many. I mean, I can sit there and I'm watching a wren. I love to watch little wrens that come into our, I mean, when it's snow. I don't know how the birds do it make it in this kind of weather. But uh, talk about uh, birds, and particularly in America, because I've heard there's been flight changes. Migratory birds are changing flights. Things are, birds are showing up that we never have had here before. In fact, some, uh, I know a hunter this year that, listen to this, I don't know if you heard this, uh, Frank, that killed two golden eye. Now, have you ever seen a golden eye, Frank? Not in the wild. That, isn't that something? So how would a golden eye get in our flyway, which is, uh, and, and I'm sure that, uh, that uh, Mayoka, you, 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 you guys follow some of these traits that, that we as duck hunters know, and the, whether it's uh, the Pacific flyway where you grew up or the, or the off on the, the eastern coast. So talk a little bit about the migration of birds. Are we in, are we in danger of, of losing birds? Yeah, so uh, this is a great question, and it actually ties into part of Year of the Bird, which is um, how do we tell uh, what's happening with birds, both their migrations and their numbers over time, and then how can we take small steps to be a part of helping put that puzzle together? So the answer is that um, we can use different techniques to see um, if birds are declining in number over time. And one of those techniques is citizen science. It's people who are outside watching birds who tell us what they're seeing. One way that they can do that in Year of the Bird, next month in February, between Uh uh, February 16th and 19th, we have the Great Backyard Bird Count. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so anybody who sees birds anywhere can record, okay, what species did I see? How many? And you go to birdcount.org and you put your numbers in. And that creates really a snapshot of birds around the world that we could not get in any other way. Now, you imagine we've been doing that now. This is going to be the 21st year. So you can compare from year to year. And because the Great Backyard Bird Count continues through a program called eBird, every day of the year you can also see the birds moving across the year, across the the landscapes, across the hemispheres. Yeah. Because all these birders are submitting observations every day. You can actually see animated maps now created Amazing. with that. And yeah. so when you get these unusual sightings and you put them into eBird, those become a part of that picture. And I'm talking, we're talking about uh, a lot of bird watchers here. I mean, I don't think uh, some people don't realize how many people do this. Uh, this is done by not only thousands, but millions of people worldwide. That's right. And in last year's Great Backyard Bird Count, which think about it, it was only four days long, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there were 6,250 bird species tallied yeah. in those four days. In those four days. And, yeah, think about how many bird species each of us may see in a day or in a year. Well, in four days, with all that collective effort, more than 6,000 birds recorded. Wow. Species, yeah. Well, that's what I always like, and I like to get someone from the... Uh, from the lab on with. Thank you for being with us uh, this morning. Uh, 
Miyoko and uh, tell everybody hello for us up there. We'll stay in touch. And, uh, again, uh, welcome to Outdoors with Larry Ray. Thank you, and happy Year of the Bird, everybody. Happy Year of the Bird. Thank you. All right. All right, everybody, happy Year of the Bird. Uh, that's pretty interesting. That that many people in uh, – I like birds. I'm a bird watcher. I'm a closet bird watcher. Okay, I know I should be out, but I actually do like to watch the birds. And you do too, don't you? I do. I yeah. mean, I, when you're out there duck hunting. Um, I love those ones that come right over your head right there. You well, know, no, I'm not talking about necessary. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm talking about all the, you know, there's lots of other yeah, there birds are. out there besides ducks. Yeah. And, you, you know, you get to watch them and. Plenty of time to watch them sometimes, more times than you wish you had, though, uh, when it gets down to it. But the year of the bird. Let me tell you about next week's show. Uh, Ron Wong will not be in the studio. for You, you know, he's going to be at Grizzly Jig. Ron actually gave me his itinerary for 2018. Uh, I feel like that um, it might change, he said, but uh, he's going to be everywhere. There's going to be four Ron Wongs next year, but... Uh, He's going to be up at Carruthersville, Missouri for the Grizzly Jig uh, Big Shindig. Uh, Bill Cooksey will be in there with us. We're going to talk to Gary Dollahan and Kent Driscoll about Crappie University. Yeah, you can go to school and learn about Crappie. It's coming to Southwest uh, Community College. And then we're going to get a, a live report from the SHOT Show by Stevie Fry of Mojo, uh, which is one of my favorite uh, companies. Uh, you've dealt with Mojo, I, I know. I have a few of their products. Yes, you have a few of their products. And then we'll talk to Ron twice from up there. And then Strike Kings, Mark Copley. And we'll try to get, uh, maybe we'll get Gary Lester on next week. If not, we will have him on uh, the first Saturday show in February. Thank you guys for dropping in. Thank you, uh, Guy, for taking time from your business. Um, Good to be here. You, you're a lot of folks out there with uh, pipe problems, and I don't mean uh, the kind you smoke. You know, we're talking about water pipes. You see them all over the place. Uh, Greg Ratliff, thank you, taking care of us. Frank Barton, head on over to uh, all of his stores. You'll open on Mount Moriah. What time this morning? Half hour from now, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, and come over there and see that 34. You got that 34,000? It's out there on Mount Moriah right now. It's out there right now. Go over and look at it. And go ahead and uh, buy three or four of them while you're at it. Frank will make you a deal. You can't can't turn down. We say we'll treat you so many different ways, you're bound to like one of them. <laughs> did, you, did you write that down? I don't have a pencil. You know, we'll treat you so many with different So many ways. different ways, you're bound to like one of them. Well, we got to get that. Is that in the commercial? We need to get that. Right for us. All right, this is Larry Ray reminding you I do each and every week that it doesn't cost an extra cent to be a good sport. And God, God bless, bless the USA. Bless you can find everything.